yes ajit joshi sheetal parthada sandeep bose mohan manas devashish everyone a very warm warm welcome to each and everything capturing moments very warm welcome i think uh, if you can uh, misroom khatun if you can just uh, rename yourself and misroom if you can just open your window so that we can also Hi, Dev Jani. Good evening. Sadiqur, welcome. Live, guess again. Sadiqur, welcome. Hello, Jaga. Manas, Jaga, welcome. You are on mute, Jaga. Devashish Tarafdar, welcome. Good Adi evening, everybody. Hi, Shital, welcome. Good evening, everybody. So guys, this is this is going to be very informal session. Normally, we always have very formal questions, structured each and everything. But when I when I started talking to uh, Shomi Shankar Dada, I thought that he is not a man who will uh, be well exploited in a structured way. I mean, I I I want to take every bit of his knowledge, his information in such a way that when he enjoys talking, he will only keep on talking, and I love that actually. Tapan, I welcome. Tapan is still figuring out who has welcomed him. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dada, before starting, let me uh, yeah. introduce few of my uh, real uh, good friends, great friends. So, as you uh, already met Udayan, so Udayan, me and Udayan, we started this uh, uh, group. Uh, I mean, in in idea, but there are few people those who have given shape. Like so, Maheshwaran. Maheshwaran is based in uh, Chennai. He is president of our uh, group. Maheshwaran. Yeah. I mean, if you can just unmute. Yeah. <clears throat> How? Hi, Samya. So welcome. Hi. <laughs> so looking forward to a good session today. Yes. So so the only only Tamil word that I know is uh, the, the the one that's called Nandri. So I I, I understand it's called thank you. Yes, <laughs> Nandri. I can I can Nandri. be one more. The only Tamil and uh, word I know being yeah. staying in uh, Chennai for last three years. Yeah. Vanakkam. Yeah, vanakkam is I think it's it's a welcome. I think yeah, it's yeah. a it's equivalent of welcome. Yeah. Yes, correct. So just when you know. Or or, or or maybe is it a greeting? Vanakkam is a greeting or welcome? Uh, I can use it for both. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So that means you know two words. Oh, now I know two words. <laughs> so your vocabulary is increased by hundred percent. <laughs> I mean, this, this adda is Indian. really going to become an adda only because yeah, yeah. I mean the moderator is not even getting chance to speak. <laughs> <laughs> and is it no, typical? I'm, no, I am saying like every, Shushir, every Indian, not right away, but I am talking about this is about uh, let's say. Uh, at least maybe ten years back, there used to be an advertisement on television. When when we used to see television a lot, uh, it, it was a very quick advertisement wherein this Tamil person used to put a glue on a uh, like a stick and stick. used to just put it in the uh, the water and he would be like uh, one to ten in Tamil and uh, he would just shake it and he would just bring it up. Yes. So at that point, catch fishes. I, yeah and, and that and probably that is a time when people learned that tamil 1 to 10 through the advertisement <laughs> awesome that is good so that's why we got kiran kiran from pune so kiran yeah. is our uh, hi kiran um, secretary hi, sir. how are you I, i'm good yeah we welcome yes thank you so much then yeah we welcome you uh, today our call and uh, we are looking forward to have a good session absolutely thank you so much yeah. and uh, So, my dear, we have got Sadikur from uh, northeastern part of uh, our country, and Sadikur is actually a real backbone of this uh, group. So he has started lot many things. In fact, Sadikur, अपनी तारीफ करें. Hi, Sadikur. Hello, sir. How are you? Hi. How are you? I'm good. Which part from northeast are you from? Ah, uh, Assam, actually. Assam. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. So, the, so, so Bengalian uh, Assamese language would be having. Uh, it's not very common but at least uh, probably you can understand yes yes, yes, yes. a lot yeah, yeah just uh, sadik will understand bengali very well I mean, he can speak <laughs> bengali as well okay okay that's great <laughs> okay welcome Before we start everyone can switch on your video so we can take a screenshot 
Sanjeev Bro Boro. Pinaki da. I think this is Pinaki Dev da. Sandeep da da. Sandeep. Devashi da da. Hi. Good evening. Welcome. Sanjeev. Hi. Sanjeev. <laughs> I'm also from Atta. Okay, you're also from Radha. Assam, yeah. Good. Assam, Assam. Assam, Assam. Assam. Ajit sir, welcome. Ashok sir, welcome. Uh, we are very sorry to keep you hold because I can see that you are waiting, but we were setting up our uh, entire presentation, each and everything we were testing. So I thought uh, I'll I'll say I'll I'll ap apologize afterward once we uh, come face to face. Manmeinda, Pinaki. I don't know. Uh, uh, I'm still confused. This uh, Pinaki Devda or uh, some someone else. Awesome, Guru. Hi, welcome. So, guys, let's start this roller coaster. I mean, I was really looking forward to have this conversation with uh, Dada. And let me tell you one uh, incident before starting. So, uh, I went for an official trip in Kolkata before yeah. Dashera. Right. Two years back. And yeah. then I saw there is a small uh, communication which came on Facebook that uh, Soumya Dada is uh, having a small uh, catch up along with different photographers on Kumar Tuli. Yes. Yes, no? Yeah, Kumar Tuli, yes. Yes, Kumar Tuli, yes. So I, I, I went and met him. And the way he met me, I never realized that we are meeting for the first time. Even after uh, knowing each other on Facebook, uh, I have never met someone like this. So, Dada, that was a great gesture. Thank you. Very Thank you much. so much. Yeah, sh short one because you had a, probably a flight to catch uh, yes. within a couple of hours. I, I, I had to rush back one. at the same rate. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But that meeting was great, and uh, one of his photos, which he still don't remember, got published in uh, I mean some magazine, which I have noticed how he has captured that moment so i would like Which to show one? it in the last so i'll i'll, I'll keep it uh, a secret for you uh, uh, do we have it in like in my presentation do we have no, that photo don't. that's why that's why that's why i i've, I've, I've taken ah, 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 the, um, yeah yeah the one that you are like referring sometime back right ah, oh, the photo i told me I, I would have like included that not to worry, because that, that photo has a special memory now for me because I've seen you live capturing something because I've, ne I've never seen you uh, clicking because you were okay. organizing people here and there. Yeah. You've not taken out your camera. So so guys, let's start formally. So Somet Dada, again, welcoming you. on Thank you so much. Thank activity. you and the entire team and all our friends and seniors. I see a few of my seniors who have already joined in. Some of uh, them I know in person, and uh, of course I I know Shondi for a very very long time, but uh, there are others also who have met like Debjani Di and all. So Dada, uh, let's start from the very beginning. Yeah, ask me easy questions. Okay, what is the spelling of cat? C A B. <laughs> good, I <good>. missed. <laughs> so uh, so. Uh, let me start from the very beginning. It means that uh, people have seen you as a photographer. People have seen you a lot many things. But who really saw me Shankar Goshal is? Because after uh, investigating about you, after researching about you, after knowing you since last two, three weeks, I think there is a lot many things which we should know. So, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Uh, people know Shomo as a photographer, but yes. I'll tell you the truth. He pretends to be a photographer on weekends. He is not a photographer. He just pretends. Good. Awesome. So that's why. So uh, from uh, I mean, from where it started, uh, we also want to understand your uh, slight uh, background when your grandfather was also having a good friends of photojournalists. How they used to come to your home yeah. and how how that small small uh, I mean overheard conversation about politics mm. and uh, I mean situation I, 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 photojournalism. Yes, I, I'll try. I'll try to summarize. Like, uh, like I know something. I, I know this word called photography. I never knew what photography was, but I knew the word photography probably from the time when I learned a few words. Because 
my grandfather was, of course, he was an amateur photographer. My father, now he doesn't practice photography anymore. So, but in our house, the culture of photography had been there for a very, very long time. And uh, so I never knew what is photography. I never knew what is a camera, but uh, I have seen an equipment called camera that was in our house. And uh, I used to visit, now I know what it is. I mean, people, uh, I understand quite a few of our friends who have joined in are from the Salon fraternity. So uh, there is something, I mean, people at least from Kolkata will definitely know it's called PAD, that is the Photographic Association of Dumdum. And this is one of the, one of the oldest photography, uh, I would say, it's not an institute, yeah, it's an institute to an, I mean, of course it's an institute because they, they used to teach for a very, very long time. So my grandfather used to be a president of this organization uh, before uh, Mr. Benusen took over. Of course, Mr. Benusen was one of the founding fathers of this organization. So I used to accompany my grandfather to those salons, which are basically the exhibitions. So what I used to see as a kid was, uh, there was two big halls and there were various photos. I, of course, at that point of time, I didn't even understand whether those photos were clicked or basically like hand painted or, I mean, you cannot, I mean, I was, let's say around three years old or four years old. So that is a time uh, I used to visit those places, but I never used to understand. And yes, I used to visit those places for one purpose because I knew after those meetings and all, they would be giving out uh, Shondesh. Shondesh is basically a, uh, it's a uh, yeah, uh, Shondesh and Bengali, in Bengali, like, in Bengali, we call it Shingara, that which is the Singara. So, so that would be given out at the end of the meeting. So I knew I used to go there for that. After the those things would be over, I would be having something nice to eat. So that slowly that thing uh, I, I knew a little about uh, photography because uh, even the mezzanine floor of our house, uh, although right now it is being used as a puja room, or in Bengali we call it as a thakur ghar. But that used to be basically my grandfather's dark room. Still today, I am talking about in 2020, uh, my relatives and people who know about my grandfather. Still, I, I, not only them, even even me, I don't tell this room as a puja room. Uh, we still call this as a photography room. We don't call this as a dark room, but people still refer, and I still refer as the photography room. So I used to go there. I never understood what really happened. Except for except for the room used to be very dark and there used to be an orange bulb. That and, and of course there were like a lot of uh, chemicals. There used to be enlargers, those kind of things. Now don't ask me anything. I, I know zero about film photography. So this was something that made me an interest. And one more thing I got into photography uh, or got me an interested about photography was because uh, I used to see my father and my grandfather, they used to guard the cameras, their cameras and lenses and filters, like the most precious objects of the house. As a kid, like, see, I'm 40 years old, so people around my age, they will know, uh, like at that point of time, television, uh, radio, even the landline telephone, forget about a mobile phone. So those kind of things used to be kind of a luxury kind of a thing. I used to be allowed to touch everything in the house, including the telephone, but the cameras used to be kept in a Almira and it was a strict no-no thing for me. I mean, I was never ever allowed even to go near to that place. So that created a curiosity for me, like what is so precious about those metal objects? I mean, which I'm not even allowed to touch. Now, of course, as being a father myself, now I know, and like I don't allow my daughter to touch my camera. So of course she she at times she does it, of course, only while sitting at the bed. But I don't uh, allow she, her. she's doing great. I mean, she has taken a few great pictures in motion of yours. I mean, jumping here and there and yes. Embarrassing photos. <laughs> yeah, for her it, it is okay. for you, but that that could be the seed of that a uh, big uh, I mean big uh, tree. I, I, I hope, but, but I never force her. I mean, if she loves photography at a later point of time, she can always take it up. So around class seven, I got a camera as a gift 
but unfortunately the, the photography hobby was like short lived maybe for about maximum 2 3 months because okay. if you remember uh, i'm talking about uh, 1993 it used to be 80 rupees for developing a film i'm not talking about the printing part i'm just talking about the developing part of the film it used to be 80 rupees so uh, 80 rupees uh, for a i mean a class 7 boy used to be a big amount of money and of course i never had the privilege of having uh, something which is known as pocket money i yeah. never ever had pocket money i mean anything that was required like my parents used to like always fulfill for that but i don't remember getting like even 10 rupees as pocket money except for durga puja time i mean durga puja was a time when you used to get for uh, getting those caps and guns for like those toy toy guns those kind of things so it did not go very well at that point of time but uh, it started around 2002 when i did not have a camera but our family had got their first digital camera it was a sony 2 megapixel camera and that actually opened the world for me because i mean from 93 to 2002 it was not a very far of distance but you you did not have a cost of developing the film the only thing that you need to do is to like plug it into the of course we never had a laptop at that point of time so it has to be plugged into the uh, desktop and it it was we did not have at that point of time those memory card readers uh, it had to be connected with a dock and it had a usb cable and it was a very awkward kind of i mean it, i i really do not know it was a very primitive kind of a usb cable and so pictures i do not really remember the resolutions but they were very small pictures but that gave me a lot of happiness because now that cost portion yeah of course i mean shutter cost is always there which i realize now but at that point of time i did not so i was very very happy of taking anything any photos under the sun except for human beings the only subject that i, that I really hated was taking photos of human beings like uh, i used to like think uh, at that point of time whenever you see any human being in a photo the whole photo is wasted but now if you check out my work like probably 99% of my work is human beings so mm-hmm. that had been a transformation for me yeah so actually i, I, was, I was about to ask you how this from finance to focal length but uh, when when i when i understood you i think finance to focal length is a very small part of your photography because the seed was uh, sown somewhere else and all that's why i yes. wanted you to speak more about the starting period i think a uh, lot many of uh, people on the group will thanks avtv iso that they have came to know the real somi shankar goshal from where he really came up and from where he has really emerged as a uh, i mean you still don't consider yourself a photographer <laughs> I know. I don't. Why, not at why, all. Why, not at why all. Is it, why? Why is it so? Because uh, I mean, we have been discussing it since last two weeks. I'm still able to uh, uh, figure it out. What is the uh, reason? Shishir, I'll be very honest with you. Like, uh, I don't consider myself. Of course, I I love photography. Uh, it's more than love, actually. It's not even passion. It's probably now a way of life. But uh, still, uh, I think I would be. Uh, i will not consider myself as a photographer because i learn every day every single day so I, probably the day i will consider myself as a photographer or i mean whatever like photographer uh, the only day after i die not before that but the I mean yes I mean it's it's a great and humble uh, statement which we also understand it's a, it's not a humble statement it's a very it's a very honest statement that I have shared with you it's a very honest statement because there that's is why, I think that that's why you are able to uh, figure it out that still there is something which I needs to improve and that's why you are improving. huge improvement huge I mean whenever whenever I see my work whenever you see your work whenever everyone who has joined today either on zoom or on facebook like whenever we see your work uh, we are the only persons to know what are our limitations because i know like i could have done this better at that point of time but i have missed 
so so that is the reason this is a very true statement that i have shared with you shishir your your mic has been muted sorry i i i, I don't no want to interrupt good so dada uh, uh, there are a lot many people and there are a lot many new people those who are coming up and they have started taking streets uh, as a genre and all so anything which you really want to uh, i mean tell that what exactly what you see when you see your photographs i mean we want to understand that uh, i mean we have not seen you clicking i i i got an opportunity to see you only once when you clicked one photo and that also got published which is a great honor for me i'll i'll show that photo but i want i mean especially for me and through me there are lot many people will get benefited that what you exactly see when you start uh, considering anything as a uh, frame uh, shishir uh, photography yes of course it's very important to me uh, but much before photography i am talking uh, about a genre called street photography i cannot talk about i am not experienced with uh, other genres of photography uh, of course even i in street photography also i consider myself a lifelong student so every day i come to know something new about it uh, what i have experienced uh, over the period of time is uh, photography is recording uh, certain moments of freezing a point of time now what do i freeze a moment now what is a moment moment is something that you have to experience in your life first before capturing it with your camera until and unless you experience life itself until and unless you can enjoy until and unless you can learn about life there is probably no point in uh, capturing those moments because uh, as a photographer probably i won't be able to relate to it so so that is the thing before uh, if anybody would like to street photography in general uh, i would love to say camera or photography probably comes second you need to experience like you need to find those slices of life which you basically want to record and it's not about photography is not about uh, getting a recognition photography is something that every one of us pursues uh, for our own selves for our own satisfaction uh, then if uh, something some kind of recognition comes in i mean it's good it's not bad uh, every every artist uh, wants recognition but of course that should never ever as for me it should never ever be a very primary objective because uh, for photography i consider like uh, three things like uh, for example i like my business management experience has helped me to travel to a lot of places and uh, uh, to visit a lot of places now for example if i take an example of a factory if the purpose of a factory is to produce goods but when when in a factory there are i'm i'm talking in general there could be like three things that happens one is a product that they are intend to manufacture or something uh, number two would be the by product something special that comes in and number 3 that would be a waste product the effluent or something uh in photography uh, i find that is there in photography also uh, our product i am not talking about the typical or the physical uh, photograph that we are i am talking about the enjoyment the love that that is the product because uh, as a photographer uh, absolutely we all are very very lucky because there are uh, two times a photographer sees a photograph one is when it is happening and he is the very first person after it is captured he is the very first person to see it on the lcd screen so he is he is the most luckiest person he saw it live and he saw it for the very first time so this is the enjoyment this is the product that we are talking about now what are the by products by products in photography for me is 
the accolades, the recognition. This is not we are. I mean, a company never sets up a manufacturing unit to sell the byproducts. So we do not pursue photography for the sake of earning this X, Y, Z amount of recognition or something. Of course, uh, if you're doing something and if, if your work gets recognized, I mean, no doubt about it. I mean, no it, it's good. Sure. And the waste product that should never ever come into us is the ego part of it. I mean, we are absolutely nothing in photography. Uh, when I say we, I, I, I mean, I consider myself, I'm, I'm not talking about the entirety. Uh, I'm a very, very small part of the, I mean, I'm a minuscule part of the photography fraternity. So there is no, I mean, if one thing that comes to my mind uh, that I have been, uh, let's say uh, I've won recognitions from World Bank and government of India, I mean, various other places, or I have been uh, years consulate, I was like a keynote speaker, whatever, whatever is the recognition, I, I'm extremely thankful to all the organizations who have considered my work, or me uh, for being recognized, I'm, I, I'm sincerely thankful to them. But uh, as a photographer, you have to keep that thing uh, away. Because you will not be able to, uh, when I say you, I mean, I, I'm talking about myself. I'm just talking about myself. Uh, I'll not be able to perform because uh, if I go out on a street shoot and uh, on a certain day, that it, it always happens with everyone. Like you go out with your camera, you don't even take out your camera from your camera bag. I mean, nothing, nothing excites you on that day. But if I come back home with the pleasure, okay, I, I am not bothered. My, my, I've got a huge archive. I mean, I mean, I can survive for the coming five years. That is the last day, probably for me in photography. I mean, if that kind of thing comes in, it's gone. I mean, when I can, whenever... relate, I can relate this statement with you because uh, as I am keep on referring to our first meeting because I've seen for the entire one one and a half. Are you have not clicked a single photo, but while the, everything was finished, you're coming back. That was only you clicked only one photo. Yeah, probably because most likely it like got an attention uh, for me. Maybe, maybe, maybe for that. That is what, that is what a, uh, I mean. Photographer does. They only see what people are not able to see. So uh, with this point, uh, that brings me to uh, another part that. Uh, uh, if you don't mind, can I uh, show one photo? And I want to ask that yeah, what was your what experience? Okay, so let me share some one. Can you see this? Yeah, I, I can. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me something more about this. What? How was this experience? Because I mean, there is. Uh, I mean, he's he's a legend. Everyone wants to meet him. Everyone yeah. wants to see him. Uh, and I, I, I'm sure everybody knows the ma the man with the blue uh, full sleeves t-shirt, right? But uh, there is uh, there is a little boy standing just to the right of him. The boy who is actually wearing a uh, red, what do you say, checkered, uh, checked half sleeve <laughs> shirt. I, I, it was not a, this was in, two, yeah, it, it is not a 38 year old me. This is actually a me, the expression is, or the feeling is of me who, who knew, who knew about Steve Macker's work. I'm talking about, uh, especially the photo on the, everybody knows about this photo. I mean, uh, Steve Macker is Sharbat Gula. So, so I knew about this man from the age of around class six. So class six. So my school used to have a wonderful library. And as a kid, uh, I, I never got attracted to those. I, I, I don't know whether like I cannot use the word cartoon or not, but I never really liked much of Tintin, Asterix, Naughty. Yeah, of course, for flipping, it was fine. But one particular thing in my library, and we, our school had a very, very big library. And 
that used to attract me. I never knew also at that point of time the name of the magazine, like National Geography, because as a class six, seven year, uh, six, seven boy, I mean, you're not more interested in what is inside the book. I used to love seeing uh, those uh, wildlife images, and I used to see those big white tubes, which now I understand are basically uh, Canon's telephoto lenses. At that point of time, I never knew what those big white tubes were. So uh, I still love seeing that. And at one of those instances, I saw this particular um, cover. That was much later. This photograph was published in, I think, 1985. And I am talking about 1992. So much later. So, But this thing like stuck into me for a very, very long time. And uh, there was a kid who wanted to meet his idol. I mean, the man who created the magic uh, for the entire world. This is one of the most recognized photos in the entire world. So the, it was basically a magic moment. Uh, I will cherish that moment for my lifetime. And this is not very far from the place where we had met. This is in Kumotuli itself. OK. Good. So any so, anything you want to share? I mean, what what exactly you how you felt? I mean, uh, that is what you told is uh, one part that there was a desire to meet your uh, yes, um, yes, yes, yes. Uh, but see, somebody what happened at that point of time? Of course, I was 37, 38 years old at that point of time. But at, but when I met him, it, it was almost transformed into a, like a 12 year, 13 year old kid because when you want to meet someone for a very, very long time, and you, when you see that person right in front of you, of course, I was seeing him from the very first time, but uh, I had been very, very lucky to have interacted with him earlier on emails and all. And uh, one thing that I would love to, if, even before I forget, I would love to say something about this gentleman, uh, is he's an extraordinary photographer. I don't have to vouch for it. The world knows about it. Uh, his work is brilliant, but one thing that I can say, I mean, from that interaction, or even the email interactions also, is he is one of the humblest persons I have ever met. Because in his email, uh, Shashir, you will not believe it was written. He writes to me that I have a blog, stevemackery.wordpress.com. Unfortunately, the blog doesn't exist anymore uh, maybe we all know the reason because of the uh, because of the reason for uh, him taking down that blog so he had written to me uh, i have a blog stevemackery.wordpress.com and i would love you to visit and share your feedback can you think an ocean asking not even a drop of water about a feedback regarding his photos this was something it was a very very humbling experience and not only that, I mean, though the time I had interacted with him, the, of course, the very, the first one minute, two minute was very humbling. And uh, uh, it was like uh, coming into reality of meeting somebody you wanted to meet for a, such a long time. But the rest of the time, he made it very, very comfortable for me. So. I did not have a difficulty in speaking with him for the rest of the time. Uh, of course, the, the entire credit goes to him. Uh, yes. So that was a very, very humbling thing. I mean, he's a very humble kind of a person. And uh, the things, of course, I mean, with Steve, when you meet Steve Beckery, I am in no position, of course, to talk about photography. So uh, the only conversation that I thought I could probably pick up was, uh, of Calcutta, because it is on record, uh, Steve McCary had said, if there is one city in the entire world that I, if somebody gives me a blank check to go and to like work, it would be Calcutta. So, and uh, as a fan, like I have seen, I do not know, n number of his YouTube uh, interviews and his work, the other things. So the conversation that I picked up is like, uh, you in your one of your interviews had said that Kolkata, and now he told me you seem to be that rich guy who can sponsor me to to complete my work in Kolkata. I <laughs> said like 
uh, who in the world is so rich to sponsor a person like Steve Macri? I mean, it's almost an impossible kind of a thing. Um, yeah, it was a very, very humbling experience. Very humbling experience. Uh, the, for him, it doesn't matter at all. Uh, I mean, those few minutes, but for me, that would be etched for a very, very long time. And, and, and Shishir, since we have been talking about Steve Macri, like, uh, I would take this small opportunity to uh, say, like, I've been, again, pretty lucky to have met a lot of brilliant photographers, and that includes uh, Raghurai sir, who, whom we humbly call Guruji. Uh, I've been very lucky to have met in person uh, Mr. Pablo Bartholomew. Uh, the one thing we know about their works, everybody knows about their works, but I've been so lucky to have met them in person and to experience how humble these photographers are. I mean, I am absolutely nothing in front of them, but the way they have accommodated me for that period of time, unbelievable. I mean, it's not only me, if they meet you or anybody, I mean, I'm sure they, they of course, they carry that beautiful aura of a world-renowned photographer, but they will never ever make you feel in that way. And I can. So that's the great. That the greatness that I've. Absolutely, I've been, brother. Absolutely, yeah, I've been I very lucky understand to just experience that, like in person. Absolutely. I mean, the way you are explaining your experience, and I mean, the way you are in trance. So I can. Yeah, understand. I am absolutely in trance. Like when I'm speaking about that experience, like I, I, I'm not right here, and still as Kumotuli, and <laughs> I can see him in front of me. So the, how about we want also to get in trance? Uh, why don't we see some of your photos? <laughs> okay, I, I hope uh, people don't beat me up after seeing my so, photographs. So what I'll do, uh, yeah, after please. Photos, we, will, we will open the session, for, open the mic for everyone. And those who wants to have any question from uh, Somuda, they can ra raise their blue hand which they can raise it from their uh, Zoom app. And one by one, we'll open the mic for them and then they can, so that otherwise it doesn't get mixed up. So those are all yours. Yes. Uh, we need to get into trance again. I, I, the, I mean, okay. Uh, yeah, it is visible. It's visible. Okay. Uh, how, uh, Shishir, how much time do we have really left? We have got another 20, 25 minutes, but uh, let's, let's, uh, okay, don't okay, worry okay, about okay. that. Let's, let's just roll on. I mean, uh, okay, I, I've got a pet project that uh, on weekends when I pretend to be a photographer, I go out. I mean, I'm not talking about right now. I mean, uh, I'm very sad that at the last street photo uh, that I could take was uh, 8th of March. After 8th of March, uh, I have not been able to go out of course i've been able I, I regularly go out for my work and uh, of course the weekly shopping and all but uh, not for pursuing my love for photography so all the photographs that are being will be showcased will be prior to pre covid okay uh, i have got a pet project i've been mean, any bengali who is seeing the screen right away is probably smiling because uh, the name of my pet project is called Kolkata. Kolkata is of course the name of the city and uh, Oli Goli Pakushtholi. Uh, Oli Goli Pakushtholi, if you, it's a rhythmic word in Bengali and if you translate that to English, it means the lanes, by lanes and the intestines of Calcutta. So basically, basically it means uh, more like uh, the soul of the city of Kolkata. Uh, awesome. So here are a, I won't say these are a few of my favorite photographs because uh, I really do not like my work because I know what could have been done better. So these are a few photos. Shishir sir told me to get it assembled. Okay. Uh, this is uh, a photo from a place called Dorji Para. This was just before uh, Durga Puja. That is uh, just before the Durga. I mean, Durga Puja is basically for 
10 days, but it is actually celebrated for around five to six days. So before uh, Shoshti, I mean Shoshti is, Shoshti is basically the sixth day of Durga Puja and before that, generally the Durga idols are not unveiled. So they have a basically curtain or a, a parda in front of them. So technically they do not want people to see the face of the idol, but I'm, I mean, in this case, I mean, you can easily see it. So I was uh, waiting for quite some time and um, this was taken, I think in either 2012 or 2013, I need to check it out. Uh, this photograph took me almost 45 minutes. I was uh, to get this photo because uh, the roads are, are, are pretty narrow and I shot it with a crop sensor, uh, nothing to do with the crop sensor, but crop sensor with an 1855 lens. Uh, I mean, you can understand the, it is not that great wide. So uh, the way it was captured was basically the truth behind it is at the, the other part of the road, there is basically a drain. Of course, it's a covered drain. And uh, I was basically sitting on that covered drain for 45 minutes and I, I was trying to get a photo and anybody who would be passing through that road, they would just look on like, why is this guy sitting with this camera on it and at least on a drain? Because that, that was the only way I could get, I did not have a wide angle lens. So that was the only way I could get this photo. And, and, and somehow I love um, taking photos. Oh, that was photos amazing of, composition. I mean, the entire I, I love, of Calcutta was there. Yeah, Ma Durga, the handful rickshaw, and I've got an inclination for like capturing handful rickshaws. I do not know why, but I love. And uh, I've been very lucky to have worked on the handful rickshaws of Calcutta as a part of the Shahpedia grant that I'd received last year. And I was very luck and lucky and I'm extremely actually thankful to them because uh, without their support uh, of Shahpedia and Indusind Bank, uh, I probably wouldn't have got that push to go ahead and uh, do this, what do you say, the project. Okay, when you're talking about Kolkata, it has to be with something to do with fish. And this is uh, a fish market at, um, this is the uh, Maniktala fish market. This is one of the interesting fish markets of Kolkata where you get, a lot, you get a lot of exotic fishes at reasonable prices. And this Bengali gentleman is basically holding a uh, Hilsa fish, which, which we call as a Ilish patch that is, a very delic delicacy for all Bengalis, and this is what you get only during the uh, uh, the rainy season. So, yes. so Bengalis love it's that. Nineteen hundred rupees per kg in Bangalore. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, it's it's a pretty costly fish, so we basically have to hold on for some. And I've heard there the is a festival around this Ilish festival also. Ah. Uh, Yes, yes. I mean, not not a typical festival <clears throat> like the other things that you, let's say Durga Puja kind of a thing. It is generally done by the community uh, of, since it's a very costly fish, people in general cannot afford. So there are organizations uh, which would basically, there would be certain organization would be collecting uh, money from the community and getting it organized. And there would be certain organizations who would be basically putting their own money and feeding people with the Ilish March or the Hilsa fish uh, with various kinds. It could be the fried one. It could be the, uh, in, we call jhol. Jhol is, what would be the term for jhol in English? It is, uh, it's not a soup, but a kind of. Uh, it's a very typical Bengali dish. I mean, then you have got Ilish Paturi, you have got Shoshe Ilish, uh, Ilish at talk. So with the same Hilsa fish, they would be preparing, and you would get only rice and various kinds of Hilsa preparations. So yeah, it, certain times, uh, it's not a typical festival, but people would still call it as a Hilsa festival. Yes, it's done at certain parts in Kolkata. This is a uh, photo I, uh, I was very lucky because this is on an 18th, day of this little 
baby where it is some kind of a cleansing ritual that is going on and again uh, i would had love to include something about kolkata so we have the howra bridge or the robindro setu at the backdrop this is one of the uh, it's not a very old picture probably i had took it like one not one maybe one and a half years two years back so uh, this is a, a new structure that has come up in kolkata this is called the kolkata gate it's a place called new town uh, it's uh, it's an it, basically the one that you can see uh, the top floor or the floor is basically a hanging restaurant oh. so so i had gone there of course i didn't go to the restaurant still now i didn't get a chance to visit this particular place i would love to but i was uh, with my camera and i wanted to take a low angle shot and this little girl from nowhere she just comes in and she just lies in front of my camera i i thought okay i mean uh, she is a part of kolkata i mean the, the curiosity part is through awesome. her photo and uh, yes. I, i of course i i did not take probably like stand alone photos of this place i included most of my photos of this kid like playing there was one more kid also So I thought, of course, and street photography is about my time. Street photography is about what is happening at the moment. So, if she is a being, she wants to be a part of the the moment. So, who am I to ask to go her away? And of course, I love kids. I mean, I mean, a lot of photos have kids. Uh, Kolkata has got a lot. I mean, Kolkata is crazy about football, and Kolkata is crazy about cricket. But people, even from Kolkata, are not aware in. on various pockets of kolkata uh, there is an importance of even wrestling also certain uh, there are a lot of state level wrestlings and even uh, national level wrestlings that were held here so this is one moment from there and one of my favorite subjects as i told you is hand pulled rickshaws uh, and uh, this is at a place called ama street and during the rainy season of course not in a bit it doesn't happen throughout i mean throughout the rainy season but if there is a huge amount of rainfall there are certain pockets of kolkata that gets water logged it's not flooded it gets water logged so at that point of time this hand pulled rickshaws are actually a boon so these are like where people would be using this hand pulled rickshaws uh, for the transportations and there is something interesting also this is a time around uh, this uh, rainy season till durga puja i'm not talking about the pandemic time i'm talking about earlier years or in general a huge amount of rickshaw pullers i mean not rickshaw pullers i mean people from bihar comes into kolkata so they get this temporary employment kind of thing so number of rickshaw pullers in kolkata during the rainy season till durga puja till diwali not durga puja even till diwali and the time after that till the next rainy season monsoons the number of rickshaw pullers are not the same it reduces drastically absolutely and uh, kolkata yeah i would take one one second of yours if yeah, i'm not please. wrong you are also working through some organization for the upliftment of these rickshaw pullers uh, last time when we met i think there was some discussion around this oh uh, yes yes uh, we try uh, i mean i'm lucky again uh, to be attached with a few philanthropic uh, initiatives uh, yes uh, we try to do something for these people and uh, of course our funds our resources everything is limited uh, pandemic gave me a little again it was a god gifted opportunity uh, to have been a part of some of the relief efforts and um, i was very very lucky because i know uh, vikas khanna ji uh, for a very, i mean one of the world renowned uh, michelin star chefs i mean I, i know vikas dada for a very very long time i mean through my work and um, whatever i mean i i know him for a long time and i'm absolutely grateful like uh, he included me i mean there are i mean if you can talk about at least two people in india who have really worked for the 
corona pandemic very very well from personal efforts i'm talking about one is uh, of course we know about sonu sood who has done a brilliant yes. job or rather he is continuing to his brilliant job and the other person is definitely vikas khanna dada he is at new york i mean he stays at new york and he has been coordinating his efforts from new york and and i'm pretty lucky that uh, he chose me as the coordinator for the kolkata zone and i must mention uh, in this uh, satya pradhan sir he's he's the chief of ndrf uh, he has done a, he and the entire ndrf team of india has done a brilliant coordination like uh, i have been during the what do you say the pandemic i have been at my home but with technology like uh, at that point of time i really realized like how much technology is really important that yes. even by staying at your home you can be a part of a huge amount of relief work absolutely. i'm absolutely grateful uh, because they had included me in their efforts thank you the thank you for sharing so uh, guys uh, pardon me if i have broken your rhythm of watching great photos but i as i said that this session is not for photography and not for uh, i mean photographer somya shankar goshal it's that what he exactly behind the camera and after the camera so i think lot many people have not uh, known about this but uh, thank you dada for bringing this and doing this great job so thank you so much and uh, yeah and if you are in kolkata i mean uh, it's a, it's an adda session along with a chai bhar i mean chai bhar is basically bhar is basically a that uh, Uh, other than kulhar and basically in bengal it's called bhar and we would love having our i, I i'm really missing the chair bhar this at this point of time because uh, i'm drinking a lot of amount of tea but only in like cups so uh, we really love because it also gives out a different kind of flavor next year avi tv entire group is coming dada so you will have to yeah yeah, yeah. we will we'll have a great time <laughs> odian is already enjoying his uh, chai Yeah, so I still not in the and, London Cup. And 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 if I'm not wrong, he's also having on a on a cup that has got written AVTV ISO. Yes. <laughs> the cup has got that hashtag. I think the cup cup. Yes. Udan Udan, I'm talking about your tea cup. In in front of the cup, the other side, other side. It is probably written. Udan, he's ISO. he's asking uh, if that cup is having our uh, AVTV hashtag. Not oh, this no. one. The other. Not this one. Okay. Okay. No way. Dada, let's continue. Okay, okay. He he is showing us. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, I missed this photo. Okay, this is this is a very very contrasting image. I mean, in Kolkata, I'll 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 just run through my images now. Okay, uh, this is a typical sherbet ka dukan, and in a sherbet ka dukan, in the background, it is rock music that is going on. I mean, two cultural contrast. in the same place uh this is from the shopedia i mean the the project that i had done i mean of course this is not the photo i i cannot use the photos that has been submitted for the grant work so this is another photo from the same thing uh, this is one i am allowed to use uh, the humble nature of a rickshaw puller uh, Shishir, am I allowed for one minute to speak about this photo because this photo is very close to my heart? I can I can understand and the emotion of these photos because uh, you can only see the face of rickshaw puller but you can't see the face of uncle and auntie. I mean that is you amazing cannot. position. Please, I'll tell you, uh, if, you, if, you if, if you and the entire team allows me, I'll just share what happened. What is the story behind this photo? Yes. Yes, please go ahead. I was basically there at Bag Bazaar to basically document rickshaw pullers. I mean, nothing else. Uh, I see suddenly this man is helping this old person coming down of a rickshaw, and it was a very very sweet moment. And I photographed it from like two three different angles because it took a little time for this old man to I mean to come down. I took it from two three angles, and of course I was. i knew he would take his money and he would just go away I mean, that's normal now he helped the man to get down from the rickshaw and uh, if you can see the blue building it has got some kind of charitable doctors dispensary or something he helped this man to that particular place and 
he took his rickshaw and he was basically going away so i asked him like you did not take money from them he said no i mean these are old people i was i was just passing through this thing please I, i saw this man could not walk so i asked him why do you want to go he said to the nearby dispensary i took him and i just gave him a lift now this was on uh, this was around uh, january so it it's it's not very cold but it was cold in calcutta uh, from this particular uh, position you cannot see that his t-shirt is torn but if you go to the sharp idea project you can see his t-shirt is basically torn and he is not wearing a warm kind of a clothing this rickshaw pullers earn around 300 rupees a day right it's not a huge sum of money but still they have that heart of not charging someone and that is also okay but the second thing that surprised me more was i i took out my wallet i took out of course it was not a huge amount of money i took out a few notes i handed that over to him he awesome. said like why uh, why are you giving me this money i said uh, it is it is out of my love for what i have just seen that you have doing i i just want to give you that money he absolutely refused that money he did not want to take it i mean those 100 rupees really doesn't of course it's a little it would have really helped him but he refused that money the only option that was left for me was i took that note i put it in his pocket and i ran away from that place so that he could not he could not refuse so street photography is not about just moments it is about the experience called life it it tells us so many things as a street photographer like if i would have just captured and i would have just went away i would not have known about i do not know about the name of this person i do not know about who this uncle how this auntie are but this moment and especially he refused that money i mean nobody in the world refuses money he refused <laughs> calcutta is a very very emotional kind of a place these are uh, two mannequins these are basically these were used at some durga puja pandal but but the local people did not throw them away they preserved it and not only they preserved it every year or every at a certain point of time they replace the clothes oh they replace the clothes it's something hmm. unbelievable i mean who would be basically caring about i mean i mean the mannequins they will be thrown away again an interesting thing about kolkata its street photography is not just about it's not always about fun it is also about a little bit of documenting i mean this is this is the place where this man stays an early morning scene from a place called it's not actually mallik ghat it is the next ghat towards mallik ghat it's called ram krishna goenka zanana bathing ghat uh, and a man is basically doing his morning yoga or something again some emotional parts of calcutta that's present like this man nobody knew he was basically going to catch a bus he tripped all strangers came running and helping him out somebody poured him water somebody gave him the money to take the bus ticket somebody purchased tea biscuits i took the photo of course the next thing i i did it it's not just about a photo uh, i took this man's slippers i got it mended by the cobbler and i handed over to him so i i, I did my part also it's not just about the photos okay again i mean i mean uh, i'm sure other cities also have it but something interesting about kolkata so this this is an image i i i i love uh, not not as my work but because of the emotion there and uh, when i when i later posted this image uh, somebody tagged this person and he like i connect with him like very often and he is basically a doctor from calcutta i mean kolkata medical college yeah. and uh, now we are connected on facebook 
and this little boy has now grown up a little and uh, this gentleman often sends me his growing up photos awesome uh, Dada, this, this is one of one of this is a photo I, this is a photo i did not want to take i did not want to take i was having a bharat cha with a few of my friends i saw this thing happening in front of me but the person in me told me not to take the photo but the photographer in me told me you must take that photo absolutely and i took the photo from behind so their identity is not uh, revealed and uh, uh, what i found is interesting we generally hold the hands of our parents we generally do not hold the the clothing or the lungi the man is wearing it's called a bohurupi bohurupi are people who are basically who dress up like gods and goddesses and they move around the city basically they ask for money and, but this is one of the bohurupis of kolkata uh, this is a place it's not too far from kumotuli it's called dompara where you get uh, this kind of things made i mean uh, mannequins i mean uh, made from thermocol for various kind of uh, celebrations i mean uh, for durga puja christmas uh, other celebration diwali you get people get these things made from this particular place and uh, what i found is interesting is i mean the, the frail body of this man and he looked somewhat similar to gandhi ji again this is an interesting photo like it's not very unusual for a son to carry a sick mother but the most unusual part was even the even the uh, of course you know yeah the polythene has got written a thank you i mean a son can never thank a mother i mean it's, it's never possible to thank a mother the greatness of a mother cannot be done with a simple thank you uh, but still i mean the relationship of the thank you just came in and that is the reason i took the photo again and a very emotional the, and that life is keep on uh, going on i mean people yeah. are uh, taking their tea eating everything awesome dada absolutely absolutely uh, this is again a very emotional moment like this little kid comes and with her outstretched arms trying to go towards her father uh, this is a photo at a place called ama street and uh, of course again photography street photography have to be a little bit lucky so uh, it was a day of shab e barat and uh, this little kid was basically moving and 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 i knew if i would have stood in front uh, this kid would have run away because see kids are not very like they do not expect photographers to come and suddenly take a photo Absolutely. so i had to hide be almost behind a wall and uh, and then take his photo and I, of course since it was shab e barat i was lucky i mean otherwise this boy on the other day would have probably worn a t-shirt and a short and he would not have worn a prayer cap uh, this is the same place as the gandhi ji photo that we saw is the dompara where i mean the hulk is almost like to hit this old man uh, i i personally do not like taking photos of uh, poverty but the thing that asked me to take a photo my conscience was because i had never ever seen a balloon with a sad face or a gloomy face yes. i have always seen balloons with a smiley kind of face i mean that prompted me i mean even the balloon is not very happy with the state of affairs of this little boy he should be studying not selling balloons at a traffic stop absolutely this is a one i had taken in i think 2013 uh, this was at uh, babughat transit camp this is of a uh, of course i knew came to know about this man later he was called uh, michri baba uh, michri is uh, it's a um, what do you say michri is uh, it's a bengali term uh, you go those crystals of sugar uh, sugar big crystals basically i mean michris are basically sugar crystals but much bigger sizes i do not know we what is the michri we, we call it michri 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 yeah so he he was basically a, a mishri baba who used to basically hand out uh, his prasad in form of mishri but what, I, i do not know like from 2013 i mean 2013 i photographed him like from 2014 every year i have gone to this place uh, 
even this year have been to ganga sagar uh, mela at ganga sagar for the last 7 years i could not even see him and and, and I, i always show this photo to the other sadhu babas around they say no he doesn't come or i do not know whether he is there or i, I really want to meet him i want to show him this particular photo if i'm not wrong uh, somada i mean uh, that mishri baba photo is one of the most connected photo which people came to know about you and you also uh, i mean in uh, yes 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 i mean, I mean because I'm i came to know about you with this photo i mean so i'm i'm telling with my own experience so definitely people like me who are still very new to this uh, street world so yeah i mean uh, lucky i mean i mean mishri baba's photo uh, uh yeah that i mean gave me uh, i i won't use the word recognition but yes yes some people actually know me because probably of this photo this is a photo from the recent time this this was luckily taken this year just before the pandemic started oh good this is again at a place called kali ghat i mean this woman is in a trance and it's on a shitala puja thing i mean it's happening uh this is a photo just taken before your um, it's on the eve of eid and celebration of eid is going on on the right hand part of the image and but this man is devoted is to his allah almighty and he's still offering his namaz he he has not like gone away and enjoying himself so it's a very contrasting photo and 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 i really love uh, this photo because for two purposes i mean the calmness that is there in the photo as well as there is commotion on the right hand part of the photo so the it's a it's a tranquility and pandemonium at the same time this particular photo and it's also a very very lucky photo because this particular place has changed i mean this building is there but a new construction has come up this view is not there anymore so this was taken in 2012 yeah 2012 i guess yeah 12 uh, and and luckily this was taken on 19th of august and, and it was a coincidence of world photography day oh awesome. and, and it was a lucky thing i never knew like when i was basically taking some other photographs when the iftar was basically happening this photo of me taking a photograph of that iftar kind of thing was basically published in um, uh indian express newspaper i never knew about that i came to know much later that it was a world photography day thing that it was basically published uh this was from um, um what do you say john mash to me yeah this is of course kumo tuli on a just before the durga puja thing comes in and um, it was a rainy day this is this is from um, a scene from maharam Maharam is of course it's known from the Shi- because of the Shiites they perform uh, self flagellations but this uh, yeah Shia but the Sunnis generally do not uh, perform uh, those kind of things uh, as per what I know uh, but it it might seem very very uh, dangerous but I have been visiting this place for a very very long time but everything is coordinated and uh, safety things are kept in mind it is. it well, yeah. looks very difficult but things are very very well coordinated very good awesome this is again from a scene from moharram where they do this fire blowing uh this is the peerless hotel of kolkata wherein uh, they were basically doing this motif of the merolac was uh, if you can probably see i mean uh, the people who were painting on the merolac thing they were basically painting this particular hotel and uh, coincidentally uh, religion I, i i love doc you will see a lot of photos of religion in my work and coincidentally the i mean the taxi driver uh, was basically a muslim person so again it's a coincidence kind of thing coexistence of everything in together at the same place when dada this is one of the most iconic photo i have seen and uh, the most yeah, unfortunate it's, it's, part I, I, the most unfortunate part that now this hotel doesn't look like this yeah they have again like painted it like full white once again i mean it's not there anymore luckily i had taken a photo so it's there it's there forever actually it's not only me i'm sure i mean a lot of other photographers have also taken them 
this is again a very emotional moment of an old lady who is basically getting uh, goddess durga dressed and and this is not from a locality durga puja uh, this is a, a traditional bonedi badi puja which is basically a, a household puja uh, from it's a household puja basically again this is a puja i mean this is a kali thakur that's the goddess kali and this is during the bhashan bhashan is basically the immersion procession of the goddess and as you can see the the height is almost about two stories at least one and a half stories this is it's a pretty huge idol uh, what i really liked even the dog was basically probably waving i mean the the kind of emotion i mean for bengalis durga puja and any kind of puja when it ends it's 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 a very emotional kind of thing i mean uh, as if we wait like we really really wait for durga ma to come back or the other goddess to come back it's a very emotional kind of thing for a bengali like the next one month feels so lonely kind of a thing <laughs> this is this is at uh, bhavanipur cemetery uh, this was around uh, uh, this was um, on all souls day and uh, I, i'm pretty lucky this person did not object him photographing a very very personal moment of his life uh, i'm sure somebody the probably the father of this person is the ritual is being done for him a children a children i mean this is this has been taken at a place uh, it's a it's a famous pastry shop in uh, kolkata it's called it's it's a nahum it's a, it's called nahums and um, it's uh, calcutta has got something very very interesting it said it's it, during during christmas this whatsapp messages come floats across uh, our like feed uh, it says i mean uh, what do you say um, christmas is a festival of christians the cakes are prepared by muslims these are sold in a jewish cake shop and these are consumed not only by the muslims and jewish and the christians but also by the parsis and the sikhs and the i mean all other religions the hindus it is consumed so it's a, it's a, it, this cake shop is very very famous awesome this is again like uh, it's a lucky photo because the santa claus is basically was stationed outside a basically a what do you say a specs shop this is this particular row is called bow bazaar in kolkata and uh, if you translate bow bow in uh, english it means wife oh. in bengali it <laughs> means literally a bazaar of wives but it is not i do not know why it's called bow bazaar but it's called bow bazaar bow bazaar is pretty famous for uh, specs shops so this man was basically coming and the santa claus offered him some toffees or something as a christmas gift okay awesome. I, i think i think i have come to the probably the last photo uh, mm -hmm. hopefully this is the last photo uh, again uh, kolkata i mean not only in kolkata india india uh, has got a very big lgbtq community and every year uh, india has a lot of rainbow pride walks and this is a walk uh, this is a photo taken from last year it was 29th of january uh, 29th of uh, december last year and again it's a kind of a contrast i mean uh, this man who is basically dressed in two different avatars of a lady and a man i mean he he is basically dressed as a bengali bride as well as a bengali groom together <laughs> so he represents that and uh, he's a nice person he's a very very nice person i am like he i have his phone number like he often communicates with me uh, he he actually wanted the photos that are taken so that he could use this photo for uh, definitely not for putting up those uh, uh, dps on facebook but probably to get some kind of work or something these people are very very nice like i have been uh, in touch with this community for the past maybe 6 7 years now they are very they, most of them are very very well educated 
they are very humble uh, generally people who do not know about these people they have a fearful kind of mindset but uh, wonderful people these, these people are really really good so i think i have come to the end of the presentation and uh, the, these are my uh, social media coordinates i mean uh, if somebody can remember the s s g h o s a l uh, everywhere like on instagram on youtube on telegram facebook twitter it's it's the same handle it is over there it's called s s g h o s a l so yeah shishir like uh, we have come to the uh, yes end of i i think like i took a lot for time that it was allocated for me no actually uh, um, i mean pe people didn't even realize that there was time which was running because we will we were totally in trance yeah i mean, I mean that if, if somebody has to be credited for that it is definitely kolkata it no, is it kolkata is yeah, i mean i mean there is there is no doubt about it there is no doubt about it <laughs> absolutely so uh that's what i'll do i'll i'll ask few of my members if uh, they really have anything uh, is specifically to ask uh, with yeah yeah you. sure sure please go ahead <clears throat> so i'll unmute everyone and whoever wants to uh, uh, ask any question they can unmute themselves uh, udayanda sandeep anyone No, uh, sir. I would like to say a few things. If it's yeah, okay. Sandeep, Sandeep uh, uh, is your uh, net working uh, properly? Sandeep, where, where is the camera on? I mean, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We Once. understand. No, I'll tell you. Like, uh, Shishir, Sandeep, like, uh, of course, uh, we take a lot of photos, but um, uh, we are more comfortable behind the camera than in being in front. of the camera so 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 the pandemic has also taught me to come in front of the camera uh, that is of course the pandemic is not good everything should become well very very soon but at least one small positive is at least we have learned to come in front of the camera yes and and in fact we all are learning how to uh, i mean be more Oop up. yes So, Sandeep, you wanted to ask something, and uh, anyone who else wants to ask anything directly from Dada, they can raise their hands, and uh, probably we can take uh, five, five, four questions, something like that, keeping time in mind. Yeah, okay. yeah. we have already, we have already crossed a lot of time. I think twenty minutes I mean, over shot. Street photography, you can't bind it in any time and uh, zone. So let's. Ah, uh, I mean, uh, see, see. Now, now let me talk. Ah, uh, so I don't want to ask a question to Shomoda, but I have known him for like I think five years now. Yes. Yeah, and uh, to be to be honest, Shomoda, turn on your camera, bhai. One second, one second. I, yeah. I it's it's not a very. One can switch on the camera, so next five ten minutes we can have a adda. Yeah, adda adda. Let's go. <laughs> one second. Yeah. If ah. you can recognize me, so now. Uh, uh we both have receding hairlines <laughs> yes i i have so, hairlines more on the back than on the front <laughs> yeah so the thing is so dada i have known him for like 5 years and uh, it was when i started photography itself yeah. and i was lucky enough to uh, you know spend an entire day with him i went to his house saw one nice presentation on the types of street photography and then we went out and shot a few photographs for around 2 uh, 3 hours that day and uh, shishi that was the luckiest day of my life because i got around 20 nice photographs on the same day it was just being with him it's it's i don't know why it was but it was just his presence that so, so I, 20, i was lucky so shonde so shonde 20 plates of biryani is due for me Awesome. And you know, and you know, my most my most famous photograph was also shot on that day. So it so my my good luck photograph was also shot on that day. Uh, so it was it was lucky to have him walk with me, and uh, that Thank was. Thank you so much, Sandeep. 
yeah that was probably you know uh, the day that i learned street photography i mean i have been seeing a lot of photographs online but that day he explained to me all the different types of genres and what are the types of uh, photographs that or you know the events that you need to look for on the streets when when you uh, are out there so basically he trained my eyes and after that i never looked back so it's thank very, you for that it's very kind of sandeep to uh, give such a nice compliment but uh, i do not know i have been Uh, worthy enough of that, but it is very good to know that at least, uh, not for me, but at least street photography has influenced Sandeep. For I, I've been following his work, of course, for a very long time now. Uh, Sandeep has uh, massively improved. His work is absolutely brilliant, uh, no doubts about it. But I'm really very happy that uh, it's not about me, but street photography. helped him to find him his own love love yes yes and what it does is i mean uh, like dada also mentioned even if you don't take photographs when you're on the streets you see a lot of things and be happy about it and feel happy that you were able to observe that so that's what it does it changes you as a person so dada thank you and thank you sandeep thank, thank you for the so session much. i mean i have i have not uh, i i mean whenever i'm in calcutta uh, only for a week generally so if there is a weekend outing i generally try to attend but it's not always been uh, you know right. possible so i look forward to doing it soon again and absolutely meeting you. sure sure sandeep anyone else yeah. so then uh, i have a question so yeah yeah right street photography what i found i find is very difficult for me so <clears throat> If you see my work, I uh, will find very hardly there is a street photograph. The reason what I find is when the subject is very fast. So how how do you uh, make ready yourself? The street photography even can happen any time in front of you. Absolutely, field. absolutely. See, other than for me, what I find is street photography is luck, no doubt about it. I mean, a luck element has to be there for street photography. For example. the moments that i shared with you like if those moments did not happen at that point of time i am sure right now when we are speaking moments are happening all around us but unfortunately as of now i cannot go out street photography is luck no doubt about it but it doesn't end with a full stop there is a comma it has to be met with preparation in street photography over a period of time it's not just me it is anyone uh people start pre visualizing this thing might happen down the time every time it doesn't happen but if we pre visualize and and i love shooting only on manual mode because that gives me um uh, a very good control over the equipment so what i generally do is even if i am not shooting and since i am on manual mode every 15 minutes i change my exposure settings wherever i go even though i am not shooting so that if something happens it should be taken without even probably thinking also because i do not if i think about uh, my shutter speed and iso and aperture those kind of things uh, i'll definitely miss the moment not only me i mean i'm talking about anyone so we will be missing the moments so i always try to keep that exposure thing of course of course i mean uh, somebody would say like uh, what's wrong in keeping it on uh, aperture priority or shutter priority but aperture priority i would not prefer in street photography because the shutter speed because of the light condition the shutter speed might change and I, I, and i'm not a really, really big fan of uh, big isos because i know the modern cameras are good enough in uh, like handling isos at larger numbers but i i personally cannot stand that green Uh, so i generally put it into I, i love hovering to maximum around 800 Mo, i mean the only photo that i had shared today uh, was that the, the first photo of madurga at the backdrop and the rickshaw puller going in front is that is probably the few photos of my life that has been taken with 1600 iso i mean 1600 iso for me is probably a huge number I, i i generally do not love to of course my camera is good enough to handle far higher isos but i i don't feel very comfortable so that is the reason i prefer always shooting in manual mode and you have to be ready so that 
if something comes see for example it is nothing to do about photography it like i am sure many of us in the friends not not many of us i don't include myself because i do not know to play any kind of instrument i mean a person who can play a guitar i mean when he plays a guitar uh, the the thoughts flow from his head through his arms through his fingers he doesn't have to think which string is in which number and which one he has to pull so it flows automatically for a photographer a camera is nothing more than an extension a, 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 an extension of an eye and a hand now while recording a moment if i th- have to think about that gear call camera it doesn't work at least it doesn't work for me good anyone else so, yeah uh-huh. ajit ji has raised his hand so ajit ji uh, if you could just unmute and yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So, namaste namaste sir are uh, please I don't to... call me sir please <laughs> you are a master in photography you are my sir no no, no. I, 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 ajit ajit sir i am a student in photography yeah i'm 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 in the montessori <laughs> good no, no no even even i am in the montessori but in section c i hope you have, you have seen me in the same class good yeah yeah okay, ajit sir okay okay now let me come to the question the uh, when you take the photograph on the street do the people ask for the money of your own you are giving the money is a different aspect but yeah. do they demand any money or uh, i i i i i never i never ever give out money to anyone this the, the only yeah. instance probably this is the only instance yeah no the no i would be wrong if i say i have not given out money i have definitely given out money uh when i have done hi guru's daughter ask her to wave us okay uh, when when uh, when uh, when i was doing a documentary on the handful rickshaws yes of course of course i had given out money because i have i was basically given a grant a grant amount to give out the money to the people okay it was not for giving out the money to people the grant was given to me and i thought it was a good way of sharing that money uh, with the people who would basically require it but yeah. personally for my street photography i never give out money yeah. of course if i have to give out money to somebody it would not be for the purpose of getting a photograph of him or her uh, the only time i have given i generally do not give out money if i see a kid or I, if i really want to i won't use the word help because i am nobody uh, great enough to help someone but if i want to share with something with someone uh, if i have some kids they come in like uh, i would take them to the nearest uh, sweet shop or the nearest uh, local yeah. Uh, look at those, those cigarette shop where you can go get those potato chips and all i would give it out to them uh, for example when i know that i will be going somewhere for example see these are most for the documentary work like uh, i have been working uh, with a quite a few philanthropic projects and uh, i have visited a place called asha lamb so when i went there uh, i took almost i think 200 uh, what do you say that eclairs 200 okay. eclairs with them but uh, i strictly told the organizers uh, number one i will not give out the toffees myself and the little kids should not know that i have carried the toffees from them and i have told them when oh, you distribute the toffees when you distribute the toffees to all these kids give one to me also so that they feel that uh, that i am also getting a reward yeah yeah Awesome. So, so I, I generally, I generally do not do. Guru's daughter did not come still now. Please ask. <laughs> she's, she's very shy, uh, brother. <laughs> oh, no, you ask her. You ask her. Tell her that an uncle from Kolkata wants to say hello to her. Um, help me. <laughs> no, she's very really hesitant. Yeah, we have to. Okay, then, then you do a hi from my behalf. And, uh, Dada, one more question. <laughs> Dada, one more question. Yes, yes, Dada. Can I, can I, boy? Yeah, yeah. Please, please, please. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh do you do you uh, take the you can say zone focusing or uh, you can say the you carry out on the manual but uh, do you uh, believe in the zone focusing uh zone focusing i believe like yes of course it's a very important concept but 
especially where you are working with harsh lights and shadows but uh, mm -hmm. i personally prefer the typical evaluative thing that is over there uh, so that and, and and of course of course i shoot in raw so that if later it is required yeah. i can do a little bit of the post processing part of it yes i i would i would really love to implement zone processing on a on a on a, on a deeper scale but as of now i have not able to do it right away uh, so i have to rely on that automatic evaluative kind of thing for that so i think his question is little difficult his question sir, was uh, thank, you, you sir. thank you very much thank you i think yeah. it was different it is thank a you. focusing or the single focusing single point focusing which one you are using in a street photography oh okay okay i, I think i missed it i i missed this question uh when i purchased my first dslr it had three focus points so mm -hmm. i had been using uh, the middle one and and and, and, and of course refocus mm -hmm. i mean not refocus i mean recompose when i purchased my second camera i think it had lot more now my camera has got much more i mean number of i i am not i even do not know how many it has uh, in 2007 uh, yeah 2007 i had used one 2020 i still use one that awesome. middle one okay i i am sorry i i dada ajit dada i i just i think misrepresented your uh, i misunderstood your uh, no, but that is bring uh, another information also Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have a two question again in the related to street photography. Yes, so please. First, if you use the middle one, that means so you have to uh, keep your subject in the middle, right? Now so later you can uh, crop it to composite. So no, 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 no. I, 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 of course it has to be in the middle. Then I recompose it. Focus. Then I recompose it. Okay. I, I, I personally do not believe in the crop tool in. photoshop yeah of course i even crop if there are certain things i mean that has come into my frame i try to but i generally do not try to crop it because uh, two reasons one is uh, i am shooting with an x camera with uh, a certain amount of megapixels so i am not actually fully utilizing the full value of that uh, megapixel count and number two is uh, i am sure not only you i am sure like all of the friends who have joined us uh, when you work get selected somewhere i mean let's say for example my shadu baba uh, photo was basically published in national geographic traveler uh, they basically asked for the raw file raw file yes because because they that on telephone they basically asked me i mean are those uh, things i mean are those manipulated i said no no way i mean that's a real photo they said like can you like send a copy of i mean how do you shoot i said i should always raw so they were very happy they said can you send the raw file to us i said yes of course i mean at that point of time sending i mean i'm talking about 2013 uh, 14 2014 i guess, or maybe 13 i, I forgot i mean no, that point of time internet internet was never this fast so i told him like if i have to send you this file it would take at least 15 20 minutes to upload this is okay it's fine it would it takes one hour it doesn't matter so they believed that photo was genuine only after this they saw that um, particular photo yeah. and if you see that photo you would see i have left an imperfection on the left hand side of the photo uh, there is a small white uh, portion that is visible it was it was a disturbance i could have cropped it out i did not i i, I left it as it is awesome so guys if if any more questions we'll proceed else we'll uh, we'll say thank you very much dada that was i mean guys to be very frank this is what he has shown it's just only a tip of the tip of the tip of the iceberg i would suggest please go to his uh, website see his monochrome work i don't know why he has not included into that but i oh, I, I, oh, i don't include, i don't know i thought i had included yeah so so uh, that's that's one thing you should definitely and uh, see it it's amazing work so so dada 
Anything else you have to share with us? I'm just, I'm just trying to find out the photo you are basically referring to. Uh, you say that is on my website, right? This one. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about this one. Yes, yes, yes. I think, yeah, I think this is the one you are referring when you were like, yes, uh, we yes, met yes. on so this I, particular. I was about to get into my cab and uh, you said, bye, Shishir. And then you uh, just, there was a, I mean, truck going on, which with this and all something. So okay, okay, yeah, when, yeah. I remember this way, but still, and uh, when I see that it got published in some magazine and also amazing. That was a great, great feeling to have. Thank you so much to see. Thank you so much, Dada. That was great. And Thank you uh, so much. We, we definitely wish that the entire AVTV ISO team will uh, come and we'll have yeah, a great course, team along of course. with you. We would love to. We would love to go out yes. on a photo walk. And not only a photo walk, a typical Arda session sitting somewhere and with a chai, a chai bhaar and other, other, other tea. Got, yeah, so we have got a mixed culture. We have got people from uh, Maharashtra, from Chennai, from Andhra Pradesh, Hyderabad. And from Uttar Pradesh also. So okay, we have that's great. great cultural Adda actually. Yeah. Awesome. So thank you very much, Dada. It was thank, you so thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for thank you for having me here today. And uh, uh, it was a wonderful Adda session with everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, people who are of my age, of course, people who are younger, and uh, I understand people like Ajitji, some some of uh, very senior people also had joined it. Thank you so much for the kind time that you had given to me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Dada. Thank you so and much. Please, and, and everybody, please stay safe. Uh, I'm sure like uh, we can conquer this pandemic and get back, not to the new normal, but to the normal. New normal. Yeah. Thank you. Dada. Thank so, you so much. Dada, one Thank more you, last you. thing. One more last thing. Yes, please. This is the first of the series. So many okay. more to come. So you'll have to Thank be prepared you. with a lot many uh, of your great works and a lot many. I, 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 I don't know. These are not great works. These are the works that I've already. Calcutta has given me an opportunity yes. to freeze this moment. This I, I have been just an observer and I've been very, very lucky to have been at the right place at the right time. That's it. Entire credit goes to Calcutta, the Calcutta and the Japanese camera manufacturers. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks so much. Great. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye bye. And uh, everyone, thank you so much. Namaskar. Namaskar, sir. Namaskar. Bye bye. Bye. <clears throat>